there is one house in Vedic astrology which tells you what is the weakness of that person or what are the weaknesses of that person and that house is the sixth house even if there are no planets there i'll tell you how that works all right but have you ever wondered why sixth house is the house of weaknesses because it shows the six anarthas which torment us right so artha means value anartha means that which is useless which means that which causes trouble which takes your artha out of your life and when i say artha it just does not mean money it means overall auspiciousness so therefore if you have planets in the sixth house then it can wreck havoc in your life because sixth house is also the house of job <laughs> so what is job job if you see the hindi translation right it's called nokri nokar e <laughs> So it's like you are becoming, you are behaving like a knocker, which means you are behaving like a servant, okay? So now, uh, it may not sound the best, but that's exactly what it is, where a boss comes and tells you, hey, do this, do that, and you have no other option, okay? But why does a person succeed in exploiting us? So don't see this in terms of, you know, job, entrepreneurship, business, and all this, but see this in general, okay? So... Any planet in the sixth house has the power to make you a slave of that particular planet because you possess the weakness related to that planet. But I know what you're thinking. You may be thinking, oh yeah, you know, so what? You know, I don't have any planets there, you know, in the sixth house. And before I go into the sixth house, it is the sixth house in your Bhava Chalit chart. B-H-A-A-V-C-H-A-L-I-T. C H A R T. So if you do not know what Bhavachali chart is, I will not waste time explaining it here. I have the video. Go to YouTube and type Bhavachali chart exotic astrology. You will find there is a video which explains everything from top till the end. And please do not ask the same questions again and again in the comments. I will not be replying because all the questions that you ask has been answered in that video. Okay, so please go and watch it, and only then you will know what is. You know, which planets are there in your sixth house? Because many times you think you have, uh, for example, you are Cancer Lagna and your Saturn is in Capricorn, okay? So you think, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, Cancer is first house, Capricorn is seventh house. So then I have Saturn in seventh. But many times it's actually not in the seventh because degree-wise it is in the sixth house, okay? So even though it is in Capricorn, it is still in the sixth house and not in the seventh. So don't make this blunder of seeing the Lagna chart and deciding. So go to your Bhavachali chart and see where your planet is. Okay, and once you have seen this, now you may wonder, oh, but there are no planets in the sixth house. Okay, so does this mean that I have no weakness? Well, not really, because you will always have a sixth lord, right? So the lord of the sixth house will also tell you what is your primary weakness. And the interesting thing here is, even if you don't have any planets, you need to understand that there will be aspects to the 6th house. Now you may say, oh, but nobody is aspecting my 6th house also. Which is also not true because every planet aspects every other house. So for example, suppose you have uh, Saturn placed in the 12th house. So from there, he is aspecting your 6th house. So you will say, oh yeah, I know Saturn is aspecting my 6th you know, house. But suppose Saturn is in the first. Is he aspecting your sixth house? Well, actually he is. But he's not aspecting 100%. So all the standard aspects that we know, like for example, Saturn aspects the third, seventh and the tenth. Mars aspects, you know, fourth, seventh, eighth, Jupiter one, uh, like <clears throat> five, seven, nine. These are 100% aspects, okay? And there are softwares which uh, can easily give you the aspects and the percentages so every freaking planet is aspecting your sixth house so if you think that your sixth house is empty or no other planet is you know giving the standard hundred percent aspect and that's why you don't have any weakness then that's not possible okay so therefore you need to understand that the sixth house has six anarthas and today we will discuss the personalities associated with them but before that you have to understand among the nine planets, there are only six planets which give anarthas, which give rajogun and tamogun basically. And there are three planets which take you out of weaknesses, okay? 
So for example, Jupiter, Sun and Moon, these three planets will take you out of weaknesses. And the remaining planets, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Mars. Okay, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Mars. These six planets will give you weaknesses. So therefore, you need to understand and see what's going on. So if there's a planet, take that. If there are no planets, see if any planet is giving 100% aspect. If no, then see the percentages and calculate uh, the highest uh, amount of uh, aspect that is there okay so once you have done this now you need to understand these six planets which are in rajogun and tamagun they give you six specific type of weaknesses which you might fall prey to so these these are as follows so first is lust lust is uh, karma basically it is primarily sex desire but it is attraction in general you know even if you are uh, even if you are, you know, too much attracted to, you know, cars or houses or whatever, that that also is karma. Karma is basically desire, and the pinnacle of that is sex desire because uh, sex desire uh, has the power to intoxicate any man or a woman. Okay, because uh, it completely uh, controls your mind. Okay, so therefore, the word karma is loosely translated to lust or sex desire but it is obsession uh, attraction like you know abnormally high attraction towards anything okay so this is given by venus so if you have venus sitting there or lording or aspecting then you might be tormented by sex desire opposite sex will matter very much okay and i have seen this always all the time venus in sixth Somehow they have problems in relationships always because what happens is their desires cannot be fulfilled. Now, when I when I'm saying desires, I don't mean you know desires about uh, sexuality. I'm not. I, I don't mean to say that, but desires in general, you know, because the planet which is there in the sixth house will always uh, will always inspire you to find faults. So what is happening is. You are finding faults. Okay, this uh, this girl is not good looking. This boy is not handsome. This you know girl is not earning money. This uh, boy is you know not a millionaire. Whatever you know. So you are always finding faults. Either you are finding faults with their looks, or with their wealth, or with their behavior, or with uh, with anything and everything. Okay, everything bothers you. Okay, so therefore, the person who exemplifies this is actually Ravan. So Ravan, as is, we we know, and today is Dashera. Maybe by the time you see this video, Dashera is over. <clears throat> but we know very well he exemplifies this quality, right? Last because he was the one who had uh, abducted Sita Devi, and he sexually abused so many other ladies, right? He tried to abuse uh, Vedvati, who is uh, one of the you know expansions of, uh, yeah, who wanted to marry Lord Vishnu but then he went and tried to violate her chastity and then he did the same with Ramha also okay and then he got the curse um, that uh, if, if you try to do this next time uh, then uh, your head will crack into a thousand pieces hundred or thousand I don't remember and that is why he actually uh, did not try to do anything forcefully with Sita Devi and this is a very big misconception that Ravan was very virtuous and that is why he didn't even uh, touch her. No, he was not virtuous. There was a reason why he didn't do it. All right. So therefore, he knew that because of this curse given by Ramba's husband, okay, that his head would crack into hundreds or thousands of pieces. And that is why he was mindful. And that is why, you know, he used to always plead Sita Devi. Oh, beautiful. Oh, charming. Please accept my proposal. And then when he was frustrated, he said, if you don't accept, I will cut you into pieces and I will eat you. Even then, he could not desire of enjoying with Sita Devi. Oh, he could not force himself because he knew if he would do it, his head is gone. All right. So that's the uh, noble reason uh, why he did not uh, force himself on Sita Devi. It's not because he was virtuous or because he respected ladies. All right. That's not the reason. <laughs> Number two, we have anger. So anger is crowd basically. So anger is uh, exemplified by the planet Mars. So if Mars is again associated, extreme anger. Okay, it's like to the point that you you might also murder somebody. Okay, it's like extreme anger. Okay, 
Now you may say, oh yeah, I have Mars, you know, but I am not too angry. So maybe Mars is in the fifth again in the bhaus. Okay, it's not in the sixth. Okay, or maybe your trines are very good. Your lagna lord, sun, moon, they are very well placed. That is why this anger maybe is under control, but it can get out of control. So therefore, if Mars associates, you should be very careful with your speech and uh, your anger. And the person who exemplifies this, the Rakshas is actually Dantvakra. Okay, so Dantvakra, not much discussed uh, like the other demons, but uh, Dantvakra was personally killed by Sri Krishna himself. And you know when he was fighting with Krishna, he like you know he was so uh, so angry, so angry, so angry that out of his anger, he forgot to take the gada mace. Okay, and without that, he went and then Krishna gave one punch, a punch, and he fell out dead. Okay, so that's the story of uh, Kuket Dantvakra. We can discuss more about him some other time. So therefore, don't if Mars is associating, then don't go all out and you know like. Uh, and two bizarre things, okay? But you will be tempted. Number three, greed. Greed is Lobha basically, okay? So, calm, Krodh, Lobh. So, this is exemplified by Saturn. Because Saturn is the poverty-stricken person. It's like a person who is wretched, okay? Wretched of everything, basically. So, what happens when a person does not have, you know, when you are not having, you you want, 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 you know, you are becoming more and more greedy, 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 okay? So, the person who exemplifies this is Hiranyaksha basically because Hiranyaksha was the person who he was brother of Hiranyakashapu who will also come in a while. So Hiranyaksha was the person who uh, took away all the gold from uh, the earth okay, and then the earth went and uh, fell down into the uh, ocean. Uh, not this ocean, some other ocean okay, which we can discuss some other time. And then Lord Vishnu had to take the avatar of Varaha okay. And he had to rescue the the earth in uh, through his task. Okay, and this earth is not just this earth that we know. It is the entire Bhuloka basically. Okay, it's a big thing. We can discuss it some other time. But he exemplifies greed, and then Varadev killed him. Okay, so this is very 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 important. What happens when you only think of yourself and you think of you don't think of anybody else? One day death comes and haunts you, okay? And then it's too late. Number three, envy, Matsarya. Matsarya, this is exemplified by Mercury. Mercury shows, <clears throat> it's very interesting, right? Mercury shows uh, children, basically. And Mercury also shows friends and relatives. <laughs> Let's stay with the topic. <laughs> so, so now, does it mean every child is envious? You know, but... Children in general, you will see, you know, they may be one of the two. Like one is, you know, good Mercury, which is, you know, very free-flowing and always in eager to learn, in inquisitive, enthusiastic, you know, always positive, okay? But children, you know, if they are not and if they are born and brought up in a narcissistic way, then they can be like the, you know, Matsara side of Mercury, which is, like, you know, they're always comparing, they're always envious, they're jealous. Ah, he got this chocolate, you know, she got this dress, you know, I didn't get, you know, so so they will, you know, do all plans, you know, like Duryodhan especially, he, well, he, he and his uh, great brothers, <laughs> Duryodhan and company, DNC, right? <laughs> so since the time, like, you know, when Bhima was very young, Till maybe like around five years, he wanted to kill Bhim, okay? So he poisoned Bhim at the age of five, around that age. And then what happened? Bhima came out much more stronger because anyways, uh, that's a long story. So so you can see envy basically, what is envy? Envy is indirect appreciation. So when you are envious of somebody, you are desiring what that person has, okay? So, indirectly, you are appreciating that this person has something very valuable. Otherwise, you cannot be become envious, okay? So, in the material world, people will want you to succeed, but in generally, they are very envious. In the material world, people are happy sometimes with your success, but only till the time you do not exceed them. The moment you start exceeding them, then that is the time, you know, you will see, you know, they, they will become overly critical of you. They will criticize you all the time. And you will feel, what the hell did I do? Why are they envious of me? You know, they will taunt you. You know, they, they will 
yeah, they will be envious of you and then they will try to pull you down, okay? So therefore, the personality who exemplifies this is none other than Shishupal, right? Shishupal, he lost his mind when uh, Bhishma Pitama told in the uh, Raj Sabha of Maharaj Yudhishthir where the Agra Puja was supposed to be given during the Rajasuya Yagya to Lord Krishna himself, which is, you know, the worship of the most prominent personality. And because of his envy, he could not tolerate it. And generally, what he would do is every day he would come out and abuse Krishna 100 times. But Krishna had promised his mother that up till 100 abuses, I'll forgive. And after that, I will not. So every day he would keep this in mind. But on that day, he lost his control. And he was like so angry, he went on abusing Krishna with all, you know, nasty names. And then he lost count. And when... It was over 100, then Krishna took the Sudarshan Chakra and he chopped off his head without a single drop of blood because blood would contaminate the Rajasu Yagya and everything would go in vain. Okay, so therefore, uh, Krishna can do it. Uh, sever your head without any blood, okay? So in TV serials, you know, uh, they will show uh, like especially... Uh, there was one serial, you know, I, I don't know the name, in Star Plus or, you know, some other uh, serial... There that shown and oh blood came out and it contaminated. So these are all false basically. So there was no blood. It was bloodless surgery. <laughs> Number five is pride which is mother. You know, it's like I'm proud. You know who are you basically. It's like the big bully basically. Okay and who, who was the biggest bully. Ravana of course but specifically uh, Hiranya Kashyapu. And this is exemplified by Rahu. So if Rahu is in the sixth. There could be a situation where you might bully others and then karma will come back. And Hiranyakashyapu, he was the brother of Hiranyak, who was killed by Varahadev and who killed Hiranyakashyapu, Narsimadev himself, right? Avatar of Vishnu. So Hiranyakashyap had a son called Pralad and he would torment Pralad because Pralad would tell him that you are not the supreme. Supreme is Vishnu. So always worship Vishnu. Take the name of Vishnu, think of Vishnu, you know, chant the name of Vishnu and uh, yeah, spread spiritual knowledge. But he would not believe this, okay? So what would happen is he would try to kill Prahlad by so many different means, okay? And then one day it was like, uh, it was over. He asked, is your God there in this pillar? And then when Prahlad said, yes, Vishnu is there everywhere, so my... My Prabhu is also in this pillar. And then he was so angry, he took his mace, Gada, and he pounded the pillar. And from the pillar came out this most amazingly beautiful, yet most ferocious form of the Lord in the form of Narsimadev. And then Irnakashapu's stomach was ripped open apart. All right. <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> Number six, last but not the least, illusion, moha, which is signified by Ketu. Okay, so because uh, the demon who exemplifies this is Kumbhakaran, who is the brother of Ravan, basically. Okay, so therefore, Kumbhakaran was like, you know, he would sleep six months, get up one day again, he would go to sleep. Okay, uh, so anyways, that's a long story why that happened. But in general... Now, wherever Ketu sits, there could be headlessness and there could be confusion. Why? Because you are in illusion. You don't know what to do. Okay. So, if Ketu associates with the sixth, there could be problems like, you know, headless behavior or, you know, just not doing uh, the work that is required. Okay. But now, the most important thing is the remedy. So, for knowing the remedy, you have to uh, see the planets that remove the anarthas. Okay. So, there are three planets, Jupiter, Sun, Moon, as I said. Uh, now, there is, is there any mantra which you can use, which you can chant to remove uh, the anarthas? The best mantra to chant in this case for the sixth house is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This mantra contains the power of Jupiter, Sun and Moon. So, the word Hare which refers to Srimati Radharani, to Lakshmi Devi, to Sita, 
is actually representing Jupiter, then the word Krishna is actually referring to the planet Moon and Ram is referring to the planet Sun. Alright, so when you chant this mantra 108 times every day morning and this is a very special mantra mentioned in the Kali Santra Nupanishad. This is a very special mantra for deliverance in this age of Kaliyuga that we are living in. If you chant this mantra, gradually you will see that your bad habits are gone. You know, calm, close, lobe, mo, mother, matsara will start going, lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, delusion. They will start leaving your consciousness slow and steadily. So, if you want to take up a challenge, then take it up. Just chant this mantra every day for 30 days and you will see, you know, your sex desire will reduce, your greed will reduce, your anger will reduce, you know, your your envy will reduce, you know, your pride will reduce, your religion will reduce. You will be more clear, more calm, more happy, more peaceful and less greedy, okay, and more content. So, if you, if you chant this mantra, there will be revolutionary effects in your life, okay, and so many people all over the world uh, have benefited by chanting this mantra. So, if you chant this mantra, your life will be completely transformed. So, regardless of what is going on in your sixth house, you know, if you don't want to see your sixth house or you, you don't want to like, you know, find which planet is there, aspecting, percentage, all this, no worries, you don't have to do it. But please chant this mantra because remember every, all of these six planets are aspecting your sixth house through some percentage, if not hundred, okay? And especially if you have hundred percent aspect to the sixth house or any planet sitting there, then that's not, then uh, like chanting this mantra is not an option for you, okay? Then you must chant it 100%. Or even if the Lord of the Sixth House is either one of these six Rajasik or Tamasik planets, apart from Jupiter, Sun and Moon, of course, all right? So, I hope this video helped you and gave you good insights in regards to the Anarthas and the Sixth House. So, please do give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And for personalized consultations, you can always go to my website down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Today is Dashera. Jai Siaram. Jai Siaram. Jai Siaram.